Unfortunately, modern conventional nutrition and health wisdom have left our populations in a state of mediocre health at best. Most people over 40 are a bit round, a bit lethargic, and visit the doctor a few too many times each year. We are most likely looking forward to decades of being overweight, accumulating aches and pains, and relying progressively more on clinical care and a sizable list of medications, most of which we'd be happy to avoid. This quote makes a great point. Those writing dietary guidelines aren't actually required to promote what will bring us optimal health and to circulate these insights for the betterment of all. General population recommendations end up being mostly the agendas of those with a stake, often financial or dogmatic, in advancing the interests of their own organisations and profit-driven enterprises. When we get a formal education in health science, particularly nutrition and the analysis of scientific literature, one thing becomes very clear. Dietary recommendations don't necessarily reflect the most relevant discoveries of nutrition research. They are filtered and manipulated by vested interests, rigid ideologies, and of course the mighty dollar. So here are six examples of incorrect conventional wisdom. One, there are five food groups. We must consume food from all groups to be healthy. Two, saturated fat causes heart disease. Three, everything in moderation is a good rule of thumb. Four, we need to ingest energy to transition from a sleeping state to fuel the energy demands of the day. Five, we must consume whole grains and other starchy food to ensure a consistent energy supply. Six, we need to eat regularly spaced meals of equivalent size to maintain a steady metabolism and balance the all-important equation of calories eaten versus calories burned. The experience and knowledge that come from the past 20 years of popular nutrient-dense eating styles, such as paleo, keto, low-carb, vegetarian and vegan, have allowed us to see conventional wisdom in a new light. We should use it to our advantage. We are intelligent and will go with what's useful and discard what doesn't work. It's a case of observing how we react to changes and proceeding with the improvements that bring results. That's how we develop our own toolkit of reason for ourselves. Oftentimes, the first two to four weeks of transitioning to a nutrient-dense way of eating are the most difficult. We are letting go of some of our long-held food habits. In some cases, we are saying goodbye to foods we like or we think we like. But we're also getting the green light on a lot of amazing foods that we may have avoided previously due to the fear of fat drilled into us via conventional wisdom. When starting a nutrient-dense diet, we might early in the process fixate and grumble about missing crackers, bread and cereal. We may exhibit symptoms stemming from withdrawal from the addictive nature of these foods. Understanding this is key and will help us build the mental fortitude to ride out the process. Knowledge is power, so to speak. Constructing our foundation of superior foods will, over time, deconstruct our attachment to those that have undermined our health for far too long. Conventional wisdom will make way for intelligent choices determined by ourselves. Bit by bit, the reasoning will fall into place.